Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am here with Jamie. How are you, Jamie? I am doing great. How about you? I'm okay. We've had so much sickness in and out of the house and I'm getting over something. Our son woke up middle of the night with a fever of 103. So no. uh, just so people know, I might get interrupted and we'll just pause real quick because he's still asleep, but I told him to wake me up if he needed anything. So how are things over there? Pretty good. We kind of had a couple of like unhealthy like months up at, or I guess weeks after Christmas where everyone yeah. kind of went through some stuff, but working at a school now, I've been subbing at the middle school, our middle son goes to. And so I guess it truly is a middle school. So school of our That's middle right. Family, right? <laughs> um, but I'm just, I mean, it's, I get like a bird's eye view into what's going around. I so it's know. actually kind of, I mean, it's kind of good because I know what going around so when my kids have stuff i'm like oh yeah that's what everyone's been going home from the right next, you and know? you know you'd be like okay everyone's out for one day not too big of a deal right, exactly <laughs> or oh no we didn't want to get this so yeah right like now, people are down for a week yeah right. right now there's a stomach virus and it's high fevers stomach virus but you know uh, and then all the usual stuff too so has he been mm -hmm. sick or has it been a stomach thing or just fever only so far just fever but he just got over a pretty bad sinus infection which i also got so it's hard to say, like, is this round two or is this something totally new? So I got back to back stuff, too. I had a sinus infection. Um, I got it, I think, while we were traveling and I got a really bad what I think is a sinus infection. Yeah. And I never took antibiotics for it because it had started to resolve itself by the mm -hmm. time I would have gone. Mm -hmm. Then I got very like almost the same exact thing again like a few weeks later so i like i want fever and stuff yeah like just maybe yeah. that's the course of it Yikes. i don't know anyway all of oh well i hope he's better soon and thank you everything yeah and we wish everyone tomorrow. listening just either good health or mental and spiritual stamina in spite of less than ideal health. <laughs> like that's been my thing. Like I've kind of since you since Christmas, there's just been, it feels like one thing after another and they're all minor things, but put together, it's like, I am just not, I am not thriving at the moment. <laughs> so <laughs> prayers for, for everybody who might be in a similar boat, but I'm excited that we get to chat because these conversations always perk me up. Well, good. Yeah. I feel the same way. Um, yeah, well, let's open up in prayer and jump in. I'll, I'll Sounds open good. Up in prayer. God, we just thank you for this time together. Thank you for this day. And we just thank you that um, that you are in all things. You're in sickness. You're in health. You're in um, difficult times. You're in the times that we celebrate. And we just pray right now for everybody listening, for Alana and her family, and, and just for me and my family. God, that you would just meet us wherever we are whatever our day is shaping up to be that um that we would remember that you're in it and that we would focus in on you that we would um grab onto you as our lifeline that we would um look for the blessings that you have for us that you would look for the comfort that we get from you and that we wouldn't be afraid to voice our disappointments to voice our frustrations and our pain um and that we would receive peace from that just from from channeling that to you the creator of the universe and the sustainer of all things amen amen all righty well we have a coffee break episode i feel like it's been some time since we've done one of these it has and you know this is a topic that we have addressed i think in both of our recent conferences we have mm -hmm. had you have talked about prayerful prayerful productivity um which was definitely a topic people like to hear about i don't know if we've had a kind of universal discussion about it though i think you come at it a lot of times mm -hmm. from the angle of work and um you know we've had side conversations about it and other things but yeah. I'm thinking today, maybe if we just talk about, um, you know, address the question of which is more valuable, prayer or nose to the grindstone, and and yeah. how do those work together? Whether it's in work, uh -huh. whether it's in our relationships, whether it's in our ministries, or whatever it is, just to kind of talk about um, where does prayer fit in? Can you pray too much and do too little? Can right. you do too much and pray too little, or is it all just, yeah. So it's kind of a, yeah. yeah, I think that in general it's, I mean, 
it's going to depend, you know, for specific situations and things. But I would say in general, most of us are probably in danger of treating prayer as the last resort, yeah. right? Most of us are not in danger of God ever wagging a finger at us and saying, I wish you hadn't prayed so much about this thing. And I wish you had done something now, but real quick, I want to throw out some caveats. I think, especially in terms of, um, I'm thinking of both witnessing and mission work. I think that sometimes we might be more apt to just be like, well, okay, God's prompting me to witness to my neighbor, but I'm way uncomfortable. So I'm just going to spend a lot of time praying for them. Mm -hmm. The prayer's good, but sometimes I think it, I'd call it five to 10% of the time we could use it as an excuse to sit back and do nothing or kind of to, um, to scratch our itch, like to maybe God's really thrown an issue on your heart. And maybe I'm just trying to think of a, an example. Maybe you've seen corruption in your town and maybe you really feel <clears throat> like God has equipped you to be that whistleblower, but you're afraid to. So you say, well, I'm just going to pray for truth to come out. Now, again, in most cases, I don't think you can pray too much, but how about this as our blanket? Our blanket should be go ahead and pray, 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 pray. But part of your prayers, maybe try to include an openness to do something if God is prompting you to do that. Yeah, I think that's very good advice. And you know, I think, you know, I love to throw around the word prayer procrastination. Yes. And usually, <laughs> usually it means procrastinating praying, but sometimes you can use prayer as a procrastination yeah. mode. And so I think that's important to know is just, you know, making sure that prayer is never something you hide behind. I remember one time yeah. um, my husband and I were, we had friends that had moved to Nashville and we were in Virginia at the time and my husband, my husband was laid off. He was working for a sales company that sold mining equipment and they were mm -hmm. downsizing. It was the recession. It was, you know, very, you know, jobs were few and far yeah. between and they were a tiny company and they couldn't, mm -hmm. he was the last one hired, first one fired. So yeah. we were looking for something new and these friends of ours that we had been part of their ministry, they were, um, they had a Christian band. He had done the sound for them and on their mm -hmm. albums, on their tours and stuff locally. And so it, we wanted to go. We really wanted to be with them because it would have mm -hmm. been really fun adventure. And so we prayed about it. And I remember praying and praying and praying. And I remember talking to our friend, um, the wife of the couple that we had been talking about moving to, with. And she just was like, you know, make sure because we kept saying, well, we don't feel God calling us to move there. And mm -hmm. she said she had some really good advice. She was like, make sure that you're not, you're not mistaking God's open door and and silence on the matter as a no. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. Like, the door mm -hmm. is open. The job mm -hmm. is gone. Like, yep. make sure that you don't err on the side of, well, if I don't see a neon sign drop down from heaven, and, and as I pray about it, that this isn't for us. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, the ending to the story was it actually wasn't the right thing, but we did take steps to see. We we walked yeah. through that door. I went and I actually flew out there and I applied for a job and I got the job and it mm -hmm. didn't pay enough. And he didn't mm -hmm. have a job. He could not find a job there. Yeah. So practically speaking, you know, God mm -hmm. closed that door and that was a no. But if we had just sat there and not even tried, I very much believe that we would have gone the rest of our lives just wondering, oh, what if, what if we had tried? Yeah, yeah, right. No, that makes a ton of sense. I like that. Well, and I think that sometimes we tend to under-spiritualize the open doors, the circumstances, the fact that you need a certain amount of money to survive with your family. You know what I mean? And yes, sometimes God calls us to ignore every single logistic 
And he calls us to just step out. And those are the ones where you get the neon signs, right? Mm -hmm. Had you had like the bajillion neon signs, even if you weren't sure how it was all going to work out logistically, that could have been an indication to just step forward. So my thought is the more illogical the decision looks, right. especially to an outsider, the more like be totally sure that this is God calling you to take this huge step of faith, but don't under spiritualize the fact that, yep, this store closed. And so we're staying put or we lost our job and now we got to move and this other job open and it's, we don't know when the next one's going to get offered. Let's take it. Right. Sometimes we, um, like I, as a teen, I read a ton of missionary biographies and I, I really liked them, but it did give me this idea that if you're not getting the call with a capital T and a capital C for every decision you make, that maybe you're missing out or maybe God's not as interested in your day-to-day -day life or things like that. And I don't think that's true. You know, we have kids considering colleges and a lot of it's going to come down to even my college decision. It, it turns down to I didn't feel like God was saying, you must go to this school. It came down to the one that gave me the best scholarship package. And I said, okay, that makes sense. Right. And I think the other side of the coin, as I look back on my own choice or on yours also, is I think there are times when we hear a very clear word from God and it seems illogical. I think you touched on this just now. Mm -hmm. Like It seems illogical. So if we had just felt this very strong, like, you need to move to Nashville and I can't explain yes. it, but yeah. So, I mean, the flip side of that is more recently, there was a, um, a situation where my husband's work, there was an opening for a job in a different state that they wanted him to come there to work. His company mm -hmm. was like, Hey, we've got this job. We think you'd be good for it. And it was, the door was open. It was pretty much, mm -hmm. you have this job if you want it. Yeah. And we were getting kind of mixed messages and I just got a, a we, my husband, I think was kind of more on the side of, yeah, I think this would be good. Mm -hmm. And I ended up just, I remember when he was like, he and our oldest had gone out there to check things out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, when they got back, he said something about, well, I guess we should book a trip for the whole family to go out and check it out and look at houses. And I got yeah. this like physical revulsion in my spirit mm -hmm. and body all at the same mm -hmm. time. I've rarely yeah. had anything like that. And I knew it wasn't the right thing. And I panicked a little because I'm like, in general, I defer to him. In general, yeah. when we disagree, I'm like, yeah. hey, if it comes down to an impasse, I'm going to go mm -hmm. with your gut and I'm going to go right. with what you say because that's just how we operate and how I've chosen to mm -hmm. operate. And I didn't know how I was going to unconvince him um and because he was at that point seeming like he wanted to do it so I feel like that was from God and I yeah. did voice my mm -hmm. concerns um and it turns out other things happened as well that kind of made it so that at that point it, it he came to his own conclusion as yeah. well yeah but but I feel like if we had been in that same situation with Nashville and we had felt like, oh, we just felt this drive, but we had a hesitancy mm -hmm. in our spirit and we were like, we'll go if we, if we yeah. receive a word. I was reading Experiencing God by Henry mm -hmm. Blackaby and like, um, you know, just reading scripture to try to get some kind yeah. of like verbal calling and it, it wasn't mm -hmm. there. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think that it's just going only on, well, there was it wasn't enough money and he didn't have a job at that moment i think there are some people like abraham that are called abram to yep. hey go and I'll, you'll figure out the details on the way and that mm -hmm. should not be discounted so what would exactly. you say for someone who's in a situation and they're like how do i know if i'm getting that kind of a calling what are yeah. some steps like how do i you know how do i know oh i love that question could we pause for just a second so i can go check on something and then we'll get right back to it yes Okay. So that actually, that gave me time to think about your question too. So that was perfect. That works I, was out. Thinking, I was thinking about Paul and in Acts, and I think we see a variety of ways that God directs him to places. Sometimes it is just the logistics. 
Paul says something to the effect of, we all wanted to go here, but the door was closed. So we didn't go and then God opened a door to this other town. So we went there. It doesn't look super spiritual, but it is still God's the one opening those doors, closing those doors. So like if God really wanted you guys in Nashville, he would have opened more doors for you. <laughs> or <clears throat> he would have given the flashing neon signs and the faith to step out in spite of the fact that the doors weren't open yet. Right. And so that was one case. In other cases, though, Paul is also led by circumstances like he's on his way to town A. He gets shipwrecked and arrives on this other island and ministers there. So, again, nobody's going to look at Paul and say, well, you should have prayed more about where God was calling you to go. Sometimes it truly was the circumstances like the shipwreck or it was the open doors or there are other times where it is more of a divine calling. Like when he gets a dream of this guy, I think it's from Macedonia, but you know, the guy saying, come to our town and preach the gospel here. Right. And so I think there is a variety. And I think that sadly, as a Christian culture, we tend to glorify the ones that look more divine than the ones that are just like, God gave you a spirit to sense his call and God gave you a brain to make smart decisions. And God also gave you a discerning spirit so that sometimes if it looks like, well, do I step out in faith even though the logistics don't make sense? Or do I look at the logistics and the circumstances as God's way of opening and closing doors? I think those are just as valid, just as much of God calling me places. It kind of reminds me of Elijah and the still small voice, right? We all want the huge, you know, I'm sure you would have loved the huge, like you're sitting in church and the pastor talks about like, and in Nashville, there's people doing this. And like, and every song had something to do with Nashville or was written by someone in Nashville, right? But we want that, but sometimes it, it is the still small voice and it's not as, for lack of a better word, it's not sexy. It's not glorious. It's not something that you like would write a, a New York Times bestselling memoir about because it's kind of dull and boring, but it's still as much of God's prompting and God's leading. Yeah. And I think that's why it's important to have kind of an arsenal of tools to seek mm -hmm. out God, you know, I think that is why when we're coming to these decisions, and I guess we kind of mm -hmm. got off the productivity topic, but doing versus praying is still in this realm. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think having an arsenal of ways to, to be receptive mm -hmm. to God is important, whether it's being in God's word, surrounding yeah. yourself with teaching on God's word, or talking to people that are rooted in who God is, because there are times when other people mm -hmm. give us words that yes. or insight or wisdom that are, that are very helpful in those kinds of things. And, and you do know that it's from God. There are other people, you've got to be discerning in who you listen to as well, because right, other people, right. but yeah, I, I just think that, um, creating space to hear from God and having a few different ways and pursuing confirmation, especially with these bigger things mm -hmm. can be a helpful way to kind of move through. But, um, yeah. but again, no, I, I love that. I, I just wonder though, I know that depending on your theology, you might have different opinions on these things, but are there times when, you know, Paul would have been fine if he had gone to Macedonia or if he had gone to right. Thessalonica, um, you know, I, and God, but the point is that Paul was ready at any time to be used by mm -hmm. God, however God chose to use him, whenever, mm -hmm. wherever he was available to God and kind of had this serendipitous view of life of yeah. um, not to say that he didn't plan, not to say that he didn't have callings and be intentional mm -hmm. a lot of times, but mm -hmm. where he ended up, whether it was in prison, whether it was on an island with snakes, whether it was, you know, right. anywhere, he was ready at any point to be used by God. And I think that is kind of what it boils down to um, is let's not get so caught up in, oh, like paralyzed by, yeah. Um, you know, prayer analysis, if, if you have to go there. 
I love your puns. This is amazing. We need an entire book and every chapter is going to be like a prayer pun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and rechristen this episode. Let's just continue on this topic of just kind of hearing from God, decision making. That's one thing I love about these coffee breaks is they are a little more laid back. Um, I remember a prayer of, I believe it was David Livingston, who was um, one of the first missionaries to like the African mainland, I believe and um or like interior and the prayer starts with lord send me anywhere only go with me and i think Mm -hmm. that that should be kind of our call too. like no i don't believe that for every single decision you put on the brakes you stop and you say i am doing nothing until god gives me the green light right because god has given us green lights in the bible he's given us green lights to to go and fill the world. He's given us green lights to marry and have children. He's given us green lights to go and serve our neighbors. There are lots of green lights that we already have, right? So I don't know, like our our oldest just turned 18 and we've we've changed some of the rules. Like he doesn't have to ask us permission if he wants to log on to Amazon and order something, right? It's like, you have a green light. It's, you know, it's your money. It's your Amazon account. Be smart with it, right? And and so I think there's a maturity there. Like, and, and we still have another who anytime he wants even like a, a $2 Kindle book, mom, can I buy this, right? Because of the, there's an age difference and there's a maturity difference. And I think that, I love when Jesus says, I've no longer called you servants. I've called you friends. And a servant is going to always be coming and asking, right? They're going to be like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Like, let's say you have someone um, who you've hired. Let's say, you know, let's talk about someone we may have hired to help with our social media on praying Christian women, which we have not done. And if you're interested, send us your resume. (laughs) But, you know, let's say at the beginning, they're like, okay, here's what I'm planning on posting. Is this going to work? Is everything okay there? And then eventually, like you build up some trust and you're like, hey, go ahead and do it. Right. Or, you know, this is, this is what you need. Go ahead and take care of it. And so I feel like, We do not need to be in prayer analysis. We don't need to just throw on the brakes, do nothing but pray for every single thing. Um, I don't think that's living in freedom. I think that there could even be some superstition tied up in that in terms of if I don't get an okay from God, he's going to get mad at me and he's not going to bless me, right? Like imagine if every single like hour, your middle schooler called you, mom, can I go to math class now? Mom, it's time for PE. Is it okay if I go to PE? It's like, no, like do your school day. <laughs> like, and so I think that we do have some, we have a lot of freedom in that. However, there always needs to be the openness. Like if you were to I don't know if your son can get, you know, calls from school or, you know, you call him or you call the office and say, Hey, something came up. I need to pick you up and you're coming home. He's not going to say, sorry, I've got a math quiz. I can't make it. He's going to say, Oh, okay. I'll meet you at the office. (laughs) Right. Yeah, definitely. And I, I like that picture of, I don't know, just the freedom that comes with that idea of, um, well, it's like, we're no longer, uh, we're no longer slaves. We're sons and daughters. I mean, we are mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. There is there are privileges that come with being a son or a daughter, and yeah. privileges that come with you know we're not just. Uh, it's a relationship. It's not a dictatorship. Exactly right. Like when your kids were preschoolers, they probably needed permission for anything they ate. Right. They're, they're probably not going to like, they're definitely not going to open up the cupboard and make themselves, you know, a a brownie (laughs) or something. They're not going to bake anything. But by the time they're high schoolers, they come home, they open up the fridge, they find stuff. If there's something we are saving and we don't want them to use, we'll tell them if there's something they're going through way too fast, we'll be like, Hey, one of these a day, but in general, yeah, they don't have to They don't have to come and ask for permission for every single thing. And instead of that being like super spiritual, like it might look like on the outside, that, that kind of is sad. Like, imagine if you had a 17 year old living at home and like, mom, can I, can I have this granola bar? Like, 
no, like we, we, there's food. Take take your food. And I I sometimes feel like I would sing that to us like, you have choices. Take your choices. Yeah. And I do wonder if God sometimes gets not frustrated, but just kind of is mm -hmm. like, come on guys. Like, yeah, look, it's like, mm -hmm. you've got this whole world. You've got all these options. Don't play yeah. it safe. Don't be so scared. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure I've told you this story before, but it really, um, it kind of messed up my thinking for a while. There was a missionary who came to speak to our I forget if it was to our church or to our youth group. And like, I loved that. I loved having missionaries coming in and out. I loved hearing the stories of how they were called. Um, but again, it, it kind of did glorify the call, you know, and made you feel like you needed something super, super, super extreme or super mm -hmm. divine. And one of the missionaries, they said like, well, people ask me, how did you know that God was calling you to Africa. And their answer was because that was the last place on earth I wanted to be mm. like, okay. Like, I love that you're willing, right. Kind of like David Livingston's prayer, Lord, send me anywhere. Only go with me. I love the willingness. I love the submission, but I really detest the underlying assumption that God is always going to lead you against your personality, against your, um, your design, like, so, okay. So we didn't do it just for fun. What would be your, like the job you would be the most miserable doing? I would say it would be anything where I was, oh, I actually thought of this recently. Um, uh -huh. if I had to like either fire people for a living uh -huh. or <laughs> if I had to like, um manage people on a like, large scale and had to have con and... just had to have confrontations with people conflict this is mediation yeah conflict okay. mediation so you're yeah i could totally picture that i was scott and i are watching um hijacked it's a it's a thriller tv mini series about like a hijacked airplane and i realized like the very worst job that i would hate the most would be like air traffic control because it's so detail oriented, it's such high stakes. Um, it'd be really hard because like most days you probably have a fairly normal day. So like <laughs> my mind would want to be like Lottie dying all over, but you got to stay super, super focused. So I think it would be very, and and sorry for using like a harsh language. It'd be stupid for us to say, okay, this is a job I would hate the most. So I guess God's calling me to become an air traffic controller, right? Or God's right, calling you to become right. an, an HR manager at a really like a high stakes confrontational mm -hmm. business. It's some of it truly is be, be smart, right? Like if, and, and I, I don't want to be the person who discourages people from a call. So let's go ahead and say like, yes, yeah, sometimes God does call you to something that feels totally out of your comfort zone. When I look at my life and when I look at the big decisions um, and the big ways that God has guided our family or guided my life, other than the NICU, which is kind of like our shipwreck, right? Like it was just circumstances that we, we couldn't change. Mm -hmm. Every other big call and big decision I was excited about, right? And, and it felt like a fit, right? It felt like, yes, I would love to go live in an itty bitty rural town in Alaska, right? Like it felt like, yes, this is, this is what I was made for. Um, I can't think of any call where it was like, you're going to be so miserable doing this, but don't worry. I got you. You're going to be okay. Can you, did, did you have any yes. scenarios like that? Yeah, I can actually think of one and it wasn't like miserable, uh -huh. to think about doing it, but it was scary. So mm -hmm. I was working at a preschool when we lived in Arizona, um, mm -hmm. the preschool that our oldest went to. And then um, I, you know, it was in my comfort zone. I was, mm -hmm. you know, with just, you know, teaching little kids. And our pastor and pastor's wife met with me and said, we want to match what you're making because it would have been, it was going to be part time. I was working like 30 mm -hmm. hours a week or something like we want to match what you're making at the preschool 
and have you come on and be the children's ministry coordinator for Mm -hmm. our church. Mm -hmm. And the word coordinator is terrifying to me because again, like I said, (laughs) I don't like managing. I don't organize. You know, like I am not that person. Mm -hmm. And I knew that. And I, you know, I hesitated and I was so excited. I mean, there was joy at the idea of, because I was doing a lot of that stuff anyway. I was doing Mm -hmm. a lot of the coordinating and the curriculum and things like that without getting paid for it. So the thought of being able to do that as my job was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And then just think with that time set aside, like how much better of a job I could do. And then I was gonna be taking on some other things, but I was not managing people and I wasn't considered Mm -hmm. in charge. And the stakes are so much higher also when you get paid for something. And I, right. I could sense that, that there was going to be this, oh, mm-hmm. well, we're volunteers, you're getting paid, you better yeah. be doing a really good job and working a yeah. lot. And yeah. so that was all very terrifying for me. Um, and I prayed about it. And it was, it, it was an easy decision in the sense of, I felt like it was a call, like I was being called to it. Mm-hmm because of the logical steps like i i could look back and say oh if i like if i had been if i had not worked at this preschool for several years like i would have no idea like i brought those skills that i learned from teaching preschool into Mm -hmm. children's ministry which was really cool um Mm -hmm. and you know just seeing the progression um but as i got into the job it was terrifying and i just prayed and prayed and prayed and as i look back i made some rookie mistakes and i you know just i it it was not done perfectly but that's okay and and it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean just because you know just because you're not you you look back and think oh yeah i didn't do that perfectly maybe god didn't call me to it mm-hmm. you know i i think that's dangerous too but yes god did call me to a scary job that involved managing people which was not in my skill yeah. set or in my comfort zone but i did it it was never a thing where i would say oh my goodness uh yeah that's the last place i ever would want to be uh-huh. so <laughs> yeah i i can't think of one quite like that yeah Yeah, I think that we need to move past glorifying voluntary suffering for Christ. I think enough suffering is going to come to our lives in those shipwreck situations where you don't have to actively go out and seek it. (laughs) And I think it's okay to say, I felt called here because now, okay, let me, let me interrupt myself. Cause I'm thinking of the very ridiculous extreme, you know, God's calling me to minister to the surfer community in Costa Rica, <laughs> you know, like, okay. Like there's, there's a, there's a middle ground, right? There's the right. intersection of what you love to do, where there's a need, where there are open doors. Right. And so I feel like if you put all of those in a Venn diagram, what you get in the middle would likely be treated as a pretty green light, right? With, again, with a little bit of discernment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I think that there are things that God calls people to do that to us may look like something terrible (laughs) like um Mm -hmm. i'm thinking of mother Teresa and what she did and ministering to the lowest of low the lowly the impoverished the sick the hurting Mm -hmm. and to someone on the outside they might say oh did she just do that out of like you know is that like her version of self-flagellation right Mm -hmm. um and i don't know her and i honestly haven't even like read a biography about her so i i just know Mm -hmm. what i know like what probably everyone knows about her. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but my thought is that she found her own joy in that, that she found joy in that because that was what she was made for. If she continued in it for a long time, maybe, I mean, that is, I know I heard ability. It's a possibility. There's conflicting stories to be, um, to be honest about her. One story I heard was that she got the call once in her life and didn't didn't really feel joyful in it like so maybe it was a a self-flagellation um yeah I I don't have strong opinions because I know that um cultural perceptions 
shift. And I think she may be one of the ones like when, when we were kids, she was the epitome of, you know, service and, and sainthood. And now, you know, I've, I've heard a few stories like, oh, really, maybe this is different than we thought. So right. uh, no opinions whatsoever on yeah. her, but theoretically, anecdotally, theoretically yes. <laughs> in a situation like that, it could be that someone is being, you know, someone, someone is being called to something. Um, yeah. Because and then, God has designed them for that. Not that it's yeah. always going to be sunshine and roses. And I, I don't yeah. think that, I don't think we should run from being uncomfortable, but I don't right. think we should run to being too uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. No, I like that. that. I like that for sure. Um, lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Oh. Because, you know, like, so in, in her case, there's, oh, I remember now. Okay. One of the, I, I'm not a give God an ultimatum. Like I I'm terrified at the thought of giving God an ultimatum. The one of the closest prayers I've come to that has been, God, I know that you have called me to do this. So my nice language is please. And my not nice language is you have to give me the strength to do this. So for example, God, I know you have called me to be pregnant and be sick and have two kids under four. I know that I'm called to be a mom right now. So therefore I need you to give me the grace and the strength to fulfill that calling. And I think that the more certain you are of your call, the more you can pray that rashly, right? Because if God has called you to be uh, married to a difficult partner, or if God has called you to be a teacher in a, in a really hard classroom, you can, I think that we do have some boldness to go to God and say, Hey, you've called me to this. You've promised to give me everything I need. So here is what I need for the bare basics of meeting the call, <laughs> right? I need strength. I need, like, I need some stamina. I need some, spiritual encouragement. I think it's okay to come to God with a prayer like that. Does that sound too rude to you to put it in, in language like that, to pray like that? No. And only because I just feel like, you know, I mean, in the Psalms, there's this wrestling that happens, you know, there's mm -hmm. this, um, yeah, no, I, I don't think that I, I mean, I, I know that you can err on the side of not being reverent and fearful enough of right. the, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who created mm -hmm. the universe. Right. But I just feel like if you're feeling it, he knows anyway. Why not just be honest with him? Because I feel like the, uh -huh. the fewer barriers there are between the fewer masks you wear in God's presence, the more authentic you're going to be with him and the more you can receive because those masks go both ways. If you put something up yes. to protect what you're really feeling, you're going to put a barrier up for hearing back to and for receiving back, yeah. whether it's peace or joy or comfort or answers. Oh, that's things. so profound. Well, what would you say to women listening who are like, I don't even know what my calling is. Like I get up, I go to work because I've got to, I take care of my family because I, it's what I do, but it doesn't feel like an actual call, right? How, do you feel like everybody has a capital C call or? Yes. And I feel like that call for everybody, like the the foundation of that call, whatever it is, whatever they are, I don't think it's like one thing, but mm -hmm. is in all things, whatever you do, whether you eat, whether you drink, whether you sleep, whether mm -hmm. you work, whether you play, whether you raise children, whether you're barren, whether you mm -hmm. have a spouse or not, like whatever you do, do it for God's glory and you're sowing into God's kingdom. Like that's what our calling mm -hmm. is, is to sow store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, you know, not treasures mm -hmm. on earth. Um, that's our calling. Because if you feel like, oh, my calling is to be a pastor of a mega church and you go and you're like, you're basically doing it to see how much money you can make or right. how much fame you can garner. Like, that's not a calling. That's the, mm -hmm. maybe you think it is, or maybe it, I mean, they're not that there aren't people called to be no, pastors I, of mega churches. Yeah. But that's no, not living saying. out your calling. Living out your mm -hmm. calling is 
you know, to, to do the things that you're doing that are in front of you for God's glory. And I think mm. once we have a handle on that, we can mm. build, I think our, our calling is a foundation. Our legacy is, or a calling is like, like built on a foundation. And I think yeah. it's a lifetime of discovering rather mm -hmm. than like a one-time thing. I think for some people, God has given, it's like prayer burdens, you know? Um, right, right. Should you pray? for, for, should you pray specifically for God to give you a prayer burden? I mean, sure you could, if that's on your heart, maybe he gave you that desire to pray for a prayer mm -hmm. burden. That's like the, mm -hmm. the anchor of your prayer life, but should you neglect all the other stuff? No, like you could definitely right. make an idol out of that. So if oh, we make sure. an idol out of chasing after our calling with a capital C and we feel useless without one, Mm -hmm. the the idea is that it would have to be something flashy or definable whereas yeah. like sometimes i think we miss the forest for the trees and and we're missing all of the callings that are just like you know being a pregnant person with two yeah. young children that's a given and there's something really yeah. for me comforting about being able to identify that calling because you don't have to search for it it's just there <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um, yeah sometimes they are thrust upon you those callings yeah um there's a shakespeare quote it's uh some achieve greatness no some are born great some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them <laughs> like yeah. sometimes sometimes the callings thrust upon you yeah. right Oh, look, I have a baby in my uterus. I guess God's calling me to take care of this, you know, this baby and then this child. Like, you don't have to pray, God, should I be a mom if God has made you a mom? Or, yeah. um, you know, so sometimes it's it's just, hey, this is this is where I'm at in life. This is my calling. I would also encourage women listening, think about what you think of your calling. And then ask yourself, what if, all the kind of modern conveniences, like what if everything was stripped away? What if we went into another like pandemic level lockdown for for a year or something like that? Um, or you lost your job or, you know, something cataclysmic happened um, on a global scale. What is you know, we've talked about the prayer behind the prayer. What's the calling behind the calling, right? So I could say my calling is to write Christian fiction novels, but I didn't write anything for the last couple of weeks. Does that mean I haven't lived at my calling? No. Uh, if I lose both my hands in an accident and can no longer type, does that mean like, because that's the other thing. It's not as though we have like, most of us, I don't believe have one big thing and you know, we do that and then we drop down dead because our work's done, right? So ask yourself, what's calling behind the calling? So maybe pick three to five things that you've done regularly. So three to five jobs you've had or three to five things that you've kind of poured time or energy into. And then ask yourself like, well, do those all have something similar in common? And then maybe that can give you a deeper. So like in my case, I asked myself this a couple of years ago, like, well, what actually is my, like my business mission? And that turned into, well, what's my calling? And it was, well, to encourage women. I'm like, oh, okay, that I can do that. Even if, you know, the internet goes down and there's no more Wi-Fi and I can't publish or podcast or anything like that. I can still encourage. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would encourage you. Yeah. If, if you're unsure, pick three to five things, three to five jobs, three to five, hobbies, um, three to five roles of service, ask yourself like, well, what do all these have in common? Um, and in my case, you know, I'm going to add mom to that mix. So I could even say just encourage, you know, cause I've got three boys. I'm not encouraging women, <laughs> but you know, part of my role as their mom, I really do feel is to be an encouragement to them. So yeah. Off the cuff, Jamie, do you know your, your calling behind the calling? You know, I think encouragement might be yeah. mine as well, because I just, mm -hmm. I see what I thought about it too. I mean, when I'm in, in the school teaching yeah. or working in the office, mm -hmm. whatever I do, like the thing that I feel like I do well and the thing that brings me the most joy and like satisfaction mm -hmm. and makes me feel like I'm operating in what God has made me to be is when I can encourage the kids, yeah. especially the ones that are struggling, especially the ones that 
uh, that might be labeled as mm -hmm. troubled or troublemakers. Right. Um, and it just makes me feel like, yeah, like that is, that is such a, to me, it comes, it's like, wow, that's so easy. And right. so, and, and it doesn't mean that everything that we're called to is easy. Cause there are so many things mm -hmm. that I know that I'm called to that are not easy and they're hard, mm -hmm. but that's under, I think it, it's an undercurrent of, of everything. And through yeah. the podcast, I, I love encouraging yeah. women Mm -hmm. in what they're already doing like wow you're doing yeah. this you think that you're not but you are and you can I love that yeah amen I love that well that is an encouraging word to end on and we hope everybody has a lovely week and thanks for listening before we end oh, yep we forgot to mention this is technically our 300th episode of wow the podcast, so we just wanted to kind of make a note of that and just to thank everybody who is part of our community for being part of our community because we love this we love you we mm -hmm. and um you know it's just a, a huge privilege and joy to get to talk about prayer in real time obviously i mean this is recorded Ish. but <laughs> to talk about to talk about prayer um, yeah, I just feel like it, this, this podcast has been a huge gift to me personally, just to be able to talk about prayer, um, to bring glory to God in some way in, in my mm -hmm. own life, as I think about these things and kind of talk through them with you and with other guests. Um, so yeah, it's just very fun. So thank you guys for, fun. for the opportunity to be here. And thank you guys as listeners for being on the other side. Amen.